ओके तो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दैट इंट्रोडक्शन सो लेट मी क्विकली शेयर माय स्क्रीन या अम कैन एवरीवन सी माय स्क्रीन यस सर ओके परफेक्ट थैंक यू सो मच सो लेट्स गेट इट स्टार्टेड so so today's topic is insights on supply chain practices during covid 19 so while um, uh, professor viba reached out to me uh, for this uh, guest lecture and when i received this title and i have started to prepare this uh, presentation uh, like yesterday i've started to pen down what can i share with the uh, students um, so to be very precise insights on supply chain practices so first we should understand these practices what we are doing is it very specific to covid 19 or it's been followed like for past years itself have been following the same best practices uh, from supply chain so we, if you really uh, go back and think about this um supply chain has took the front seat in an organization years before let me uh, take you little little bit uh, like like two decades before like decades before if you really see the edge of an organization is actually dictated by the manufacturing people always talked about uh, toyota manufacturing system so uh, toyota production system uh, ford production system so what are these all this production system focused on is efficiency within the four walls of the manufacturing facility so people were counting each and every second within those manufacturing facilities such that they can arrive at value and also what japanese uh, changed the way we think from uh, telling quality comes at a cost but what they've shown us is actually quality actually increases your uh, overall uh, pnl in a much much healthier way such that actually your uh the hidden cost of quality actually becomes a positive for an organization but slowly what happened at years passed by every organization mastered these techniques and actually that competitive edge got ironed out so that seat has been taken by nothing but the supply chain so the supply chain as a buzzword is there for years and we can very confidently say uh at this point of time the organization with the best supply chain is going to have a very very clear uh, competitive edge over the competition okay so this is one uh, preview i want to uh, tell you before we get into uh, uh, this presentation itself so so why suddenly you see people talk about uh, supply chain during covid after covid why this happened is actually the realization of the companies which were thinking that hey my supply chain is the best there were no weak links and i was pretty confident that everything is great but suddenly covid 19 all it did is one simple thing made the organizations realize that there are lot of weaker links which didn't surface now with this covid 19 it all surfaced out this is a very very important uh, take away so what i'm going to share today is actually the issues which were already there which which we we have not worked on which has been now surfaced now i am going to share across in terms of i am going to start from explaining of the basics of supply chain and then going to tell you what makes the supply chain complex not just for covid 19 in terms of ever what are the key things we need to do such that we actually have a very very efficient scalable and flexible supply chain and, and and as we uh, move forward i'll also share my experience uh, with some examples so that you understand those concepts really well okay good so we'll uh, get it started i know it is uh, late down the day i'm not sure how many classes you had for the day um this is going to be really interesting i am also keeping a lot in terms of uh, keeping your career in focus so please be uh, attentive uh, keep your questions ready please pen down your questions end of the session i will have sufficient time to take down, take your questions even if today's event didn't allow to answer all the questions i can take down all the questions offline i will ensure you get those answers for it okay so with that we'll, let's get it started so what we're going to do first is let's define the supply chain it may you may seem that this is basic uh, but bear with me for just 5 to 10 minutes i'm not going to take much time explaining all the nuances of supply chain but this is very important that we define the uh, uh, supply chain first to understand the rest of the slides so let's start with who are all the key stakeholders within the supply chain so to name it 
so you have the the customer you have the retailer who is the first touch point for the customer and then we have the whole lot of distribution channel who ensures the product reaches from the manufacturing facility till the last point of sale to the customer which comes under the distribution and then there is a, a manufacturer who actually converts those raw materials into the finished products and then you have the supplier who is responsible for giving all the raw materials how simple is that right just five people supplier who is responsible to give uh, the raw materials a manufacturer who is responsible to convert these raw materials into finished products and then product distribution who is responsible actually not just to take the product till the retailer till it reaches the customer it comes under the distribution typically it will be a mix of transportation and warehousing and then comes the retailer who is the face for the customer whose job is to stock the product take it to the customer if he is an online retailer he is going to deliver it to the customer if he is a offline retailer customers are going to come and buy it that's it so these are the key stakeholders within uh, the supply chain now everyone knows what needs to be done but still the, this engine has not started so the trigger like the trigger for the start of this supply chain engine is your demand planning so the role of demand planning is to estimate what would my customers want this is the uh, a very layman way of explaining what a demand planning does so the demand planning actually works towards uh, do lot of research use the past data uh, do all this uh, uh, use all the analytical tools do whatever they are possible to ensure they try as much as possible to estimate the uh, demand perfectly so that becomes a demand forecast that goes to the supply planning whose job is to hold okay this is the forecast base is this now i need to prepare for all the materials which are required so the supply planning releases your purchase order to the supplier the production order is basically created such that the manufacturer knows when he has to start production and then base is the purchase order the supplier sends the raw material the manufacturer converts those raw material into the finished product and the distribution channel is going to take the products to the retailer base is the sales order given by the retailers and then the customer places the order with the retailer and the product reaches the customer that's it i think i i have took some 2 uh, minutes to explain the complete supply chain i don't think i i, I also heard there are a lot of final year students uh, uh, in the in the webinar so i am sure uh, you would have learned all these things but this is a single slide explaining the end to end of supply chain if you really ask me is there anything complex over here because i don't see anything complex it is as simple as uh, planning then you are taking the products conversion taking it to the customers isn't it so why that much of a uh, buzz around uh, uh, supply chain it looks as simple as this so to answer that question there are few things which makes this uh, so much simple looking uh, supply chain into a very very complex animal to handle it is so complex that i have been trying and answers to multiple business cases within uh, supply chain for the past 20 years but i have not still done still now in his all consulting every scenario which comes in as a project has a new flavor to it so that that i'm i'm sure that keeps you exciting whoever wants to get into a, a supply chain so what we're going to do now is find out what induces complexity before i reveal the answers you can also think about it and quickly tell so okay what would probably uh, induce a complexity in supply chain the first one is going to be really surprising and to be very precise there are if you uh, there are so many different uh, things which induces complexity uh, considering the time i'm going to pick only the top 3 things which i want to explain you with some very specific examples the first thing which induces complexity in supply chain is customer expectations so you may look at me now so customer is the king customer is basically all for an organization and you are actually telling customer is creating an uh, uh, complexity that 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 is not the right thing to do it is customer is always or oh, customer is right customer is first or you may be thinking all those things right just hold your thoughts on that i am going to explain how a simple supply chain can become a very very complex thing to handle because of the expectations of customer so this is the first one which i i will be sharing my thoughts on the second one is uncertainty if everything is certain about a supply chain then it is very simple but in supply chain there are lots and lots of uncertainties so we can put it in this way the organization which is going to 
effectively quantify the uncertainty and prepare the organization towards it is going to be the winner okay so and, and i'm going to explain more as we move forward the third one is functional uh, silos you all know what is a functional silo it is kind of not working together so with that preview let's get started with the first and most crucial one customer expectations and uh, so there is a difference between customer and consumer though we are always used to use customer as a word the right word to use here is consumers expectations and the difference is very simple the consumer is actually the the the, the person who's actually the end person who's going to use that product or if, if the product is consumable who's going to consume that product as simple as that okay so customer is in any relationship if you have a buyer and a seller relationship the buyer is called as a customer so the right word to use here is ideally a consumer so you can uh, relate it as i uh, told you just now okay so let's start with the first one consumers expectations so i am going to start with a very specific example because i don't want to make it so much of theoretical rather let's pick an example so that it will be very very clear for you last mile delivery so you all know what is a last mile delivery so what is last mile delivery the last mile delivery is basically the 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 travel of the product at the last leg from potentially your retailer towards the customer and the product is getting delivered uh, to the customer this is what is called as a last mile delivery previously in a offline term this is called as the secondary transportation the last leg of transportation moving towards the customer so last mile delivery is one of the key uh, function within online retailing because this decides uh decides how efficient the customer's uh, experience is going to be and how the how efficient the customer service is going to be now what we are going to do here on uh, last mile delivery is to evaluate it on two different scenarios the first scenario is for a mobile phone so you all assume yourself now you have placed an uh, order in flipkart or amazon okay and uh, amazon moment you place an order amazon is giving a pop up uh, hey uh with the current scenarios depending on your pin code you need to wait for 4 hours uh, sorry 4 uh, days to get your product you are fine with that this is a uh, looks like an uh, apple iphone so it is going to be 80000 plus i won't mind uh, waiting for 4 days to get up so i said okay fine uh, that is fine you placed an order you made the payment and after 3 uh, days one customer executive called you and said uh uh hello so and so you you placed on mobile phone um an order now uh, tomorrow we are going to uh, uh, deliver it uh, so we have only slots available on the evening time after 7 pm is that fine for you he said okay no problem i am available after 7 you can come in any time after 7 so you are very flexible so then the phone actually uh, got delivered to you and you are perfectly happy with this is a last mile example for a phone now the next product what i'm going to show you is going to change completely whatever i just explained you may be surprised you may may you may even give a good laugh at it okay oh my goodness what is this it's a it's a chicken biryani one of the top seller in most of the food delivery platforms here as well i'm going to explain you a last mile delivery here so uh, sorry if any vegetarians are there i obviously chicken uh, biryani is the top seller so i pick that as a product so if you are a vegetarian you couldn't see this you can assume this as a a, a veg biryani so think about this you you had uh, a session planned at say 12 to 1 pm is a session planned on uh, amity and uh, what happened is the session is is it's not so exciting okay nothing on your professors i know all amity has all good professors but just as an uh, example okay so here what happened it was a very bad session in addition to that the session extended by another 40 minutes so it's now 1:40 pm just put yourself into this scenario and you are so hungry and then uh, and it's also a bad session now you decided you want something to eat immediately so you are picking up the phone calling up to swiggy and uh, you're you're placing an order okay sorry not calling up you're uh, opening taking the app you didn't even think about this you wanted chicken biryani or for vegetarians veg biryani you were really hungry you ordered it and you're waiting now here will you wait can you even wait for four days for a biryani no so okay so there is days is ruled out because of the type of uh, the product what you are talking about because it is a food item and will you wait for four hours because by now we are ordering at 2 pm 
you will get the product at uh, uh, 6 pm will you be fine with that no absolutely not so your waiting time at this scenario is going to be probably 15 minutes and i'll exactly tell what will happen even i would do the same thing in 10 minutes time that is by exactly 2 10 10 minutes after i place the order i am going to call swiggy's customer service and then tell hey where is my order and you are getting a nice and sweet voice there uh, sir please hold on i will get back to you you won't hold on i will wait on line you tell me where is my uh, i am really feeling hunger hungry if the customer executive come back and uh, comes back and tell you that uh, sir there is a little bit of uh, a delay you will get it in another one hour time now what would be your reaction probably it would become a very bad day for the customer executive because you are going to use all the bad words you know and scold directly on the phone itself okay if you are really sweet you are going to show a little bit of anger at least and then what is going to happen and then the customer service executive is offering something sir sir we will give you additional points this and etc will you be accepting you are you won't be in any accepting term but the same thing you will be probably in accepting term if there is some two days delay on your phone you will be doing it but not on Uh, the the food delivery and if that product is delayed for some reason you are going to take up your phone and you are going to write on all the platforms you know in terms of this is very bad service is bad and you are also going to tag all the people you know right such that it's going to ensure a lot of people that the service is bad so this shows you the difference now let me put this in uh, the supply chain terms the difference between these two last mile delivery the mobile phone has a luxury of time in terms of consolidating orders but unfortunately your chicken biryani doesn't have that you have a window of a maximum of 30 minutes from the order till the product has to get delivered so absolutely you can't think about uh, load consolidation network optimization it's very very limited opportunity available over here not just that you can't even play around with your slots you can't decide uh, i will ship this uh, chicken biryani uh, by uh, 7 pm no the slot is only lunch time all the orders which come in within that hours has to be serviced within that hour so this put a himalayan amount of complexity into that one single function last mile delivery now i am sure you are absolutely clear in terms of just the consumers expectations how would actually transformed a function from a, a simple to complex doesn't mean i am telling um, last mile delivery of amazon is very easy it doesn't matter but there is no direct comparison between uh, a delivering a phone versus a chicken biryani okay so with that let's move to the uh, next one uh, cano model i am also going to explain you now i told okay yes uh, uh, your customer expectations are very very important but i am also going to tell you some tools how you can actually document it so the tool what i'm going to show you today is a cano model i'm not sure uh, whether you have learned about it don't worry about it i am going to two minutes i am going to explain you and i can ensure you you won't forget about cano model for the rest of your life before you we go to the cano model let me give you one simple uh, example let me try one or two examples such that you understand you um so let's let's put this way you are uh, going to check out into a, a, a hotel okay and uh, what happened is you called uh, the the manager the, the hotel manager telling hey i am planning for a one week stay on the hotel um uh, could you please tell me what are all the uh, things over there so the the actually the manager explains we provide um you have three different restaurants available you have a beautiful uh, sea view like that he explained uh, everything and you are really happy then you also uh, talked about whether parking is available etc etc everything he said yes it's available you are very happy you just checked into the hotel you are going to your uh, hotel room and then you are realizing that absolutely there are no towels in the room how would you feel and you are calling the uh, uh, hotel manager and telling hey there are no towels in the room then the manager is telling uh, uh, sir you didn't ask for it you didn't ask whether towels are there in the room when yesterday only we had the conversation you didn't tell me that why you are changing your mind you talked about a view just open the window look at you are getting a beautiful sea view a sea view this is what i committed i never told i will provide you towels now if you really insist i am going to give you at a charge i am going to charge you a fee for it how would you feel will you ever check into that hotel again no so what has gone wrong really the hotel manager is at fault no 
he committed and he has given but what that means is the customer assumes that if i am checking into a hotel that these things will be definitely available there will be a cot there will be water available there will be uh, the the towels available so there will be room service these are the things you assume hey anyway if i, I will get it into a hotel if i am checking it that is called the basic attributes so the basic attributes or which the customer will never tell you but they will actually expect it from you okay so these are all the basic attributes and the performance attributes the more the better let me take an example of a two wheeler okay in a two wheeler example a performance attribute mileage is a performance attribute the more the better that's why you are seeing a, a curve as a very straight line there is a straight curve and delight futures it is it is these attributes are wow factors like you didn't ask for it but you got it for example you checked into that hotel room uh, and then suddenly the hotel manager came in not with the same scenario not that hotel with without towels okay this is a separate hotel and you walked in everything was as per your package suddenly you realized there was a card with a coupon it says hey you get 50% off on these or the services you didn't even expect you didn't even ask for it that is a delight or you went for a non sea view room into a uh, into a probably a, a seaside uh, a hotel and they upgraded without any cost to a sea view site so these are the things comes on the delight attribute so this explains the cano model what this means very important is the takeaway is customer won't tell you everything what i'm going to quickly present to you is a reason cano model which i have done for a global logistics part of one project just see what are all the basic attributes what are the performance what are the delight attributes and i'm also quickly tell you how things have changed okay uh, i'm not going to explain everything i'm going to just quickly show you how things have changed on the uh, model see this one tms is actually the talent uh, sorry transportation management system previously transportation management system is a delight when i say uh, previously years before no one expects that you need to have a completely integrated system where every data should flow through it no one expects that now it moved from delight to basic what so think about an organization who's operating in global logistics who still operates like a, a, a transportation management system is a delight so i need you to provide it what will happen this will lead into a completely a bad experience and may you, it will result on a complete loss of your overall market share so similar way see the expectation digitalization post covid 19 situation now there is a complete change in the way customers look at each businesses which is great previously always cost drives everything currently people are looking for value that's why digitalization has become a performance attribute it can even become a basic attribute in the next few years we don't know so this is where you talk about iot blockchain you talked about a lot of initiatives been discussed now why it all roots from the change in customer expectations so to i don't want to spend more time here because it's completely technical here but i will tell you the same example we talked about staying in a hotel think about this 10 years before just 10 years before not even 10 years probably even 5 years before you walk into a hotel and if there is no wifi you are completely fine with that because years before wifi comes under delight this is where your wifi was now 2020 you are getting into a hotel you are checking in the first question you will ask is could you please give me the wifi password if that if the the front desk person is telling sir there is no uh, wifi that's it you are going to tell you don't have wifi oh come on here this is the exact feel you what happened now wifi has moved from the delight to a basic attribute so this is the crux i want to uh, tell you so now let me relate this to a covid 19 situation every business now has to go back and revisit the cano of their sector they are operating in or the market in which they are operating in if they don't do it what will happen you may think that something is in the delight it has actually switched and you are going to deliver something which is not at all acceptable by the customer this is one of the key takeaways this is this is a key takeaway which you think about any failure think about nokia's failure think about any other big organization's failure 
they would have missed on understanding their customers they thought that they know the customers but actually you didn't know your customer so cano is one of the an excellent tool to actually map what my customer needs and then place your supply chain aligned with this expectation so basically end of cano what you will get is voc which is basically voice of customer so voice of customer plus voice of business these are the two things which goes as an input to building a supply chain so post covid 19 this is the key takeaway that we have to revisit our cano to ensure that still the business model and the services are relevant okay so that completes the first one second one is uncertainty uh, let me share my experience if there is no uncertainty in supply chain i think probably i would not have even had a career in uh, uh, supply chain i would have chosen something because i have started in manufacturing um then i realized getting a hands on multiple things so so slowly from manufacturing i uh, moved to sourcing then planning then the next job with caterpillar i took the complete warehousing then all india role with 3m i was taking care of end to end and uh, logistics uh, pl- played a very crucial role like that i i always excited by uh, uh, knowing about the supply chain end to end right but the one of the exciting factor there is uncertainty so what are the uncertainties let me give you a few examples demand uncertainty you don't you you estimate what my customers may need but the best of best tools in the market delivers probably 65 to 70 percentage of accuracy so still there are lot of scope for improvement supply variability do you know that 100 percentage your products your raw material is going to reach on time no there is a variation there there is an uncertainty there damages whether my product reach without any damages whether my products will actually the right product reaches my customer like that there are so many uncertainties revolved around logistics itself right then customer related now think about um, an online business you're sending a product are you certain 100 percentage your product will get uh, delivered no there is something called as undelivered then there is something called as uh, customer should like it there are something called as return so all these forms that uncertainty within the supply chain even process related all internal it could be even external like covid 19 itself was an uncertainty right have you prepared for it no that is why this much of a uh, struggle in terms of getting the uh, rail back on track why this much struggle we have not prepared for it so the organization which has the capability to effectively quantify the uncertainty is going to be the winner now you may ask the question so how do i effectively quantify the uncertainty the the answer to that is a single word analytics okay don't underestimate the power of analytics there is a very thin line of usage of analytics there is something called as death by analytics okay don't so the, what is death by analytics is instead of doing this much and arriving at a solution you just do so many things this analysis that analysis i so just because you have an analytics tool and a very nice dashboard you should not push it to everything that is we call it as in a consultant language death by analytics okay keep in mind very funny but it is in real life if you are not understanding it will become a very pain in in a, in a business scenario so analytics is the uh, is the answer to actually quantify the uncertainty so quickly so what analytics does is it actually creates an edge on your supply chain but ensuring you can know your customers well quantifying the uncertainty in supply chain supply chain model and simulation uh, simulation this one uh, famous word people will tell me okay is yes, uh, learning from mistakes see it is really great on hearing that in a motivational way yeah i have learned something uh, it's great okay fantastic well but on a uh, career when you are building the errors in a supply chain if you are making it is very costly sometimes you are uh, uh, working salaried for someone you don't have a luxury of uh, taking a wrong decision and it it ensured uh, you lost some one crore uh, to a business right can you go to your manager and say boss you know what i we just lost one crore but i have learned a lot how how your manager will react okay so keep this in mind so in supply chain uh, it's it's it comes with a lot of cost and effort which goes waste that's why modeling and simulation is one key thing which you can again if you are in an analytics is one subject within that it is very very important it gives you an edge such that you don't have to rework on live system you are going to be very confident it may not be 100% but you you are much closer to reality when you are doing a modeling and simulation 
the last two is general one risk management and business performance management so this here as well analytics can play a role what this means is analytics gives an edge for your supply chain by effectively quantifying the uncertainty so with that preview i'm going to quickly take you through a model called scam model so this scam model is not a scam i only named it uh, so because this model is prepared by me based on my experience how me as a consultant have been using analytics for the past decade to efficiently do problem solving i'm here as well i'm not going to spend more time um, there is one uh, video on my channel for people who don't know uh, i run a channel called supply chain way a dedicated session and tons of material around analytics whatever slides i picked up from there a dedicated uh, video is available on the channel you can go through it you can even download a copy of this uh, uh, scam model or i can even share all the relevant links to professor viba after this session okay so i won't take you take you much time here but i'm going to give a preview okay so scam model starts with uh, the data which is making sense out of data that is called interpret infer is insights for the entire population sometimes what happens the data versus sorry uh, the, the the population size is so huge you pick a sample do analysis and then you have to infer that for the entire population that is where your infer that step comes in then you do a modeling forecasting simulation this is where i talked about analytic simulation and modeling tools which you can build the business scenario as a model run lot of what if then scenarios and then come up with the right solution and then you do a uh, you can arrive at a quantifiable solution you can prioritize uh, prioritize your solutions implement it on re reality and then you derive effectiveness uh, so you, you actually evaluate the effectiveness of the solution as well now if you really see what you're doing here this again i'm going to pick up the reference from the gartner model of analytics on interpret and infer this is called descriptive analytics all you are doing is making good sense out of the available data this is descriptive analytics so whoever want to get into an analytics career you will start somewhere here but the next step it becomes model forecast simulate okay this is where you are descriptive analytics become diagnostic uh, analytics that means you are now find out what went wrong what has happened or you started analyzing it in parallel the next one is becomes the prescriptive analytics that's the last leg that is over here so what happens here is your analytics career should not be stuck with only the descriptive analytics i'll tell you what happens in descriptive analytics this is very important uh, though i am taking a little bit uh, uh, direction out from the the crux of the session many of the analytics roles stops with descriptive you should probably do as an analytician for one or two years that's it that is where you do a lot of dashboards make sense out of yes so colorful dashboards but you should move ahead to the next level which is diagnostic uh, diagnostic predictive prescriptive there are four levels descriptive diagnostic predictive that is where you are making models and start predicting what will happen what my demand would be right prescriptive is actually the problem solving you are started telling how to make things happen now don't worry about it if even if you completely didn't understand the scam model go through that video and you can always get back to me with questions but one example i am going to give you today you will completely understand and this is going to help all the operations people analytics people who are want to get into such careers you won't forget what needs to be done to have a great career in analytics okay so let's go forward i am skipping this okay so don't get confused that uh, what is this suddenly did alvis put a wrong slide here it's not it is intentionally kept you know who is he so we are seeing an astrologer so the session is not into astrology or questioning belief on astrology this is i am using as a example to explain how an analytics career should be now with an assumption that you are going to an astrologer why would you go you would go to understand how my future is going to be but what an astrologer does is he won't directly tell the prediction he will first talk about your past telling hey this is how you are this is what happened after that then he is going to talk about the future now i'll give a scenario a particular astrologer you went there he predicted all your past in a wrong way it is not the actual happening how would you feel you got it all wrong 
Now, will you believe the predictions he give for your future? No, absolutely not. You probably will tell yes for everything, and after that, you won't go to him at all. So, the credibility of astrologer starts with talking about the past. The same thing happens for you as an analytician. When you get into an organization as an analytician, you are not directly going to jump and predict. The you are going to establish your credibility. by using the available data and presenting the facts in a much much better way such that you can take decisions out of it so same like how i talked about an astrologist the first impression it is very very important you gain the credibility by talking about the facts that is the descriptive analytics now assume that astrologer got everything right now you are very confident yes he got everything right it goes to the next step that is a prediction so if that astrologer talks about you are past and says okay that's it you can go how you will be you will be frustrated right same thing happens with an analytician what is the point in making the same data and presented this is what is happening okay great what next predict what is going to happen otherwise if you stuck on there talking about same data again still more colorful da da dashboard very very colorful dashboard in a very automated the dashboard voice enabled dashboard everything is on descriptive If you don't migrate to the next level, you again lose your credibility. So, as an analytician, okay, you should evaluate your career whether you are moving from the descriptive analytics immediately to a predictive analytics. Same like how I talked about this astrologer. Second one, this astrologer is telling, okay, I am going to predict thirty years from now what is going to happen. Will you be happy? Absolutely not. You may expect tell what is going to happen next week, tell what is going to happen next month. then tell me for years this is what you will exactly feel in your mind the same thing happens to you as well in an organization you need to do a short term uh, prediction as well as long term prediction you as an analytician and for the astrologer if your predictions the short term predictions become a reality you will absolutely be a superstar in an organization same like how the astrologer will become a superstar in that person's life who went to talk to an astrologer who got the predictions right you have to keep this in mind very very clear the key takeaways start with descriptive analytics to gain and make a mark in an organization move your career towards prescriptive uh, okay and i said predictive and prescriptive analytics that is moving towards prediction and problem solving then you will become the most wanted person in the organization you will be just always be near to the ceo's cabin and you will be wanted in the boardroom quite often if you do this and this is going to be the career path for any of the analyticians who are uh, watching this video great now let's let's come back with analytics okay so quick take away in terms of analytics analytics is the way forward to effectively uh, quantify the uncertainty that is why you see more and more tools and techniques everything focus on focusing on analytics coming into it and digitalization is the keyword now it is the way forward aligned with the expectations of the customer which i talked about in the cano model okay the last one i have is the functional silos as a consultant i think close to he's all completed around 400 plus projects most of the projects the root of the issue comes in functional silo you know how i will define functional silo it will be very little bit uh, in a very uh, comic way but in a reality it's very painful see this one each functions works well every function works well within the supply chain everyone's dashboard is green all green past one year two year but the organization is in all time red okay this is think about this so every individual function is doing fantastically well and uh, everyone is getting their uh, uh, ratings and everything is great because your performance is great but organization is not doing good how 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 bad isn't it right this is a clear symptom of a functional silo so how we can uh, eliminate a functional silo and again i'll tell you functional silo is always top down the top guy in the organization to should decide and put the way forward to fix this okay and i'll tell you few tips in terms of what we can do to make a supply chain function seamless we need to do a supply chain optimization in supply chain you always use the word optimization that is not like best solution it you it could it could be any scenario like for example inventory if you keep more inventory you will get a fantastic serviceful all happy customers but having a lot of inventory comes with a cost 
So it's always an optimal inventory such that you actually play with the numbers we have. That's why we use the word supply chain optimization. Any of the supply chain enthusiasts who is listening this, uh, to this session, you need to learn the game of optimization. Be it an operations, be it a uh, consultant, you need to do that. This can apply throughout the supply chain, right from sourcing, manufacturing, warehousing, transportation, inventory planning, you name everything. Even supply chain strategy, optimization is the key. Second one, supply chain strategy to execution alignment. We run an exercise called Hoshin Country. Okay, what this is, uh, this we run it for uh, bigger MNCs uh, where the teams is just huge. Supply chain itself, there will be 600 people. The biggest problem is the strategy is not aligned till the last leg of the organization. So strategy is discussed and a nice and clean deck is done and it is parked in the shelf. It is not active. So part of the Hoshin country exercise, what we do is we will make that alignment perfect and we will make the strategy document more live in terms of go back, evaluate and etc. Okay. The last one is supply chain process controls. Here, important point, you should have proactive rather than reactive approach. There are two things. Your process controls or KPIs can measure a lagging indicator. A lagging indi indicator means the problem has already happened. Think about on-time delivery. Okay. Uh, the on-time delivery, if it is telling 80%, what that means is 20% of time I am late to reach my customer. What is the, that's great. That's a first step. That's a descriptive analytics, right? So every time you keep telling that, what is the fun in telling, hey, this went wrong, that went wrong. Yes, what next? So that is where you should get into a leading indicator or a proactive approach where you are going to measure something which is going to tell you what ways you could go wrong and start fixing before actually the, the failure event occurs. So this is the nuances from a supply chain process control standpoint. So these are some of the uh, tips I want to give you in terms of what you can do to ensure you have a seamless uh, execution in terms of supply chain. So from a COVID-19 standpoint, what we missed out is in terms of having a seamlessly functioning supply chain, very, very important things, whatever we talked about, right? It is already prevailing. It is prevailing. But what we did is we didn't use it at the right time. Now with the COVID-19 being an eye opener, what are the things an organization has to do is first and foremost thing, go back and rerun your Cano model to establish your voice of business and voice of customers. Okay. So that is the first thing which an organization has to do. It is know your customers and Cano model is a fantastic tool. Second thing, you have to align your supply chain. So basically redesign your supply chain. That's the reason now we are flooded with projects. The very reason now the organizations are ready to listen that yes, I need this because I, I can't face another pandemic with the number of job losses, uh, the all the metrics went down, all the weaklings come out. It is good because that is a positive of COVID-19 because the the mindset is now very open where we can align your supply chains, redesign your supply chains with the voice of customer and voice of business. Third one, analytics is the key. I say it again, analytics is the key when you use it not for dashboards, when you use it as a predictive and prescriptive tool towards problem solving. This is going to be the future in supply chain. Lots and lots of initiatives are coming in. And from today's context, analytics is going to quantify the uncertainty within the supply chain. And that is going to give an edge for that supply chain. Third one, supply chain optimization. This is the real excitement. If you talk about supply chain, the excitement relies on the optimization. I would say it's kind of a, a paradise for a supply chain consultant, right? This optimization tools, working on data and coming up with an optimal solution for the different business cases. Anyone interested on that, you can reach me. We can have a lot of conversation over a coffee on the different business cases uh, we solve day in and day out. And the last one, don't forget it, working as a team. I, I want to tell you, whatever role you are going in, if you're not a team player, you cannot be a good manager. You cannot be a good leader. Let me quickly t t uh, tell a, a short experience of mine. 19 years old, uh, out from a college, uh, got placed into a manufacturing organization in an assembly line of compressors uh, in Coimbatore LG Equipments, where the average age of my team members are around 35 to 40. Uh, I'm 20, I'm not 19. I was around 20 years uh, old and there are unions uh, there. That means you can't do uh, that uh, manager in a cabin calling someone and telling, hey, 
do this do that doesn't work it took me one year to learn the nuances of a compressor at end of one year i can assemble a compressor it took me one year to gain there are times i even thought that can i run away from here because you can't even open your mouth because you can't talk about productivity i still remember i we do a average of 26 compressors a shift and uh, uh, and my sorry 16 compressors a shift uh, three months down the line my manager says always i want 19 today you go tell the team i went and told the team that day the output was five compressors you can't question you can't you can't do this kind of management there right but after two years i got a transformation where the same team worked with me on a lean transformation where we doubled the productivity what was the difference Every other constraint was there. The only thing is treat every team member with respect, get into their shoes and learn the nuances, get hands on on it and then work as a team. Without that, it's very difficult. But on LG, I had one year to do that. But as a consultant, your job is still more difficult. You may go work from the top, but you have just few days to do that uh, ice breaking session because that middle management is which will come as a wall before implementing your solution you need to work together as a team this applies for any function be it finance be it operations be it marketing keep in mind you have to work as a team so here as well this supply chain should gel well as a team to then deliver based on the set strategy to the uh, customer such that that gives a competitive edge so if an organization do this then i am sure they are going to get the positives of COVID-19 leverage on it and they are going to be a market leader. Okay, fantastic. So that's it uh, from my side. So it is, it's, it's open for uh, questions. I'm not sure how much time I took. Okay, great. Uh, I took around uh, 40, 47 minutes. So uh, you, you can ask your questions. I can answer whatever is possible. And I have uh, enough time, but if you don't have time, I can take some offline questions as, as well. Yeah. Um, very wonderful, sir. Uh, I have already started receiving, you know, compliments for your session. Oh, okay. uh, you. Students and even the faculty members are liking it a okay. lot. Uh, so I have received a few questions from the students. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to ask you that. Sure, sure. Uh, well, first question comes from Brijesh Tagur, I guess you know him mm -hmm. uh, so he is asking that as a supply chain consultant what has been the most challenging project you have worked on as a supply chain consultant what is the challenging project i worked on oh, my so goodness yeah. that that is a challenging question itself <laughs> anyway so see the most challenging uh, project comes uh, with smes i'm going to give it as a, a little uh, a larger uh, perspective See, you may think the challenge comes from a bigger organization. See, it is not. The challenge comes when we work with small and medium enterprises. The reason is they would have done a lot of good things. Not just that, they are also going to be along with the field and they, they want to learn along with you. So to gen show value for SME is really challenging. Not just that, that you can't go and talk about IOTs and blockchains and everything, right? So that is one edge of uh, he's all we don't associate ourselves with any technology we don't sell technology what we do is whether it is a small organization be it an, uh, a, a multinational company we pick the problem and come up with the solution which give the return that's roa is the key in our calculation so so th the point is working with smes or any project is going to be the most most uh, complex one and one more thing i can tell is go to market strategies whenever we build supply chain right from scratch till the end that we call it as a go to market strategy um, that is all those projects will be pretty challenging because it touch base on everything right from uh, sourcing uh, the processing packing uh, uh, even the conversion the manufacturing and then the distribution so go to market strategies always has that uh, tag of complexity thank you so much for that question Uh, we have one more question from one of the students uh, that what specific skills do we uh, do our students need to ha have that they qualify to be a successful supply chain consultant okay so uh, let me put this way one this is this itself is a very huge topic 
um uh, probably i will share my supply chain way channels a link to uh, uh, professor vibha there is a dedicated one or uh, explanation of this is in production uh, but anyway so that you can see it in length but i'm going to give you few tips here to be very successful first and foremost thing what you need is a problem solving ability that means you should have a good analytical backup uh, not just analytical backup you should have the functional knowledge because these two make you a, a problem solver number 2 working as a team again i am telling you guys this is going to be the uh, a fine line become become success and failure you can come up with wonderful solutions on paper but when you have to uh, implement it you need to work through the team so you should be a very good team player a, a great leader that if you are planning to become a consultant you don't have a luxury of 3 months to form a team so you need to do that in few days to get that quick ice breaking and work together as a team so these skills are very very crucial to be successful in this role hello uh, mr arvish good afternoon uh, I'm Dr. Ishtadev Mishra. I could join a little late. Yeah, so uh, well, I I work as a placement manager, and for me, uh, I would like to understand where there is an opportunity for the students, for the freshers, to join the organization in a supply chain uh, department. Okay. 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 Perfect. So again, so in supply chain, there are a lot of junior level, uh, level roles available. For example, if I'll put it in different way, someone who have the passion towards operations right you want to be on field and you want to work then you can start your uh, uh, supply chain journey in uh, manufacturing that is one great place where you can uh, do it every function there is a junior level role so you can start in manufacturing if you really like operations or you can start your work on a distribution center these two distribution or warehousing these two are really good if you are a hands on person that would be a uh, a great starting point but if you are a person who is interested in doing lot of numbers crunching uh, you want to do a mix of operations as well as analytics okay doesn't mean in uh, in a uh, manufacturing you can't use analytics it's not the way i'm telling where the flavor would be higher in that case um you can start with a planning role you can start with demand planning or supply planning uh, that would be a, a great place to start or as a, a sourcing role like a buyer uh, or vendor management these kind of roles also you can uh, uh, start with so anyone who doesn't want to get into a field work i i want to be in supply chain but i don't want field work i want to do a desk job but learn the nuances of supply chain 100 percentage close your eyes get into a planning role and you 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 won't uh, regret it okay what well, probably one more anyone who wants to get into a project based uh, experience in supply chain you can get into a process excellence role like uh, six sigma based role lean based role these things will give you a good hands on in terms of project experience yeah now uh, there are, there are uh, some it organizations today mm. in these organization it is it has come in during the discussions that distribution channel becomes more important than the product itself mm. uh, I mean, there are so many it organization right. they are specializes only the distribution itself and mm-hmm. uh, they become uh, more important than the other uh, partners in supply chain right why is it happening and what is the future like what do you think okay so uh, to be very precise this is what i've started the today's session with uh the edge the, the the competitive edge for an organization moved from uh the manufacturing to supply chain which is the end to end see uh someone tells supply chain now they actually talk about distribution right they actually exclude the manufacturing portion out when i say supply chain they are talking about distribution so obviously distribution has an edge and that is an excitement let me quickly tell without t- taking much time distribution is in an fmcg company right there are around 13 million outlets uh, uh, including all the kirana stores petty shops which serve fmcg products your job is to ensure your product reaches all this 13 million uh, outlets how exciting is that right think about that so distribution it has a great uh, uh, excitement uh, factor into it but there is one call out that since you talked about it firms i want everyone to understand difference between uh, it based roles and a proper operation so there is a himalayan difference 
if you going to a product based company and it product based company you will work only on that product your complete routine will revolve around that project if you are a person you don't like to be associated with a specific technology you should not get into that role trust me 90 percentage of uh, people calling me for some uh, they are feeling bad about their roles or they want to shift from it consulting back to a proper supply chain consulting or an it operations role to a core supply chain operations role there is a himalayan difference between both both has a great future i am not telling bad about any of this but you should be clear where you are getting into so so that's the preview about it again any follow-up questions you can reach me on linkedin or anywhere i would be able to share more yep any other questions uh, i i think there are a lot of questions over yes, here yes, yes. um in the midst of pandemic what uh, challenges your company faces i guess he's asking in terms of uh, okay resource constraint uh, supply chain okay so um okay so we we actually didn't blow up so much in terms of how uh, he's all performed because already people are struggling uh, see we are a complete problem solving company very very niche supply chain consulting okay um so actually we are running on excess projects because it it actually covid 19 become uh, kind of a um, a loud speaker of what we keep on telling our clients uh, that uh, whatever weaklings we told the client which they didn't listen to because those weaklings have created the biggest uh, problem during the covid 19 time so now they are uh, ready to really hear they are ready to actually uh work with us so and a lot of new clients as well in supply chain so we are working on a lot of go to market strategies and redesign of uh, uh supply chain so in in terms of uh, our he's all specific scenario it is actually uh, uh, came as a positive and we also ensured even the start of covid 19 we ensured uh, there is no layoffs because there was a little uh, downturn there were no layoffs no uh, cuts nothing we just maintain status quo and we were always used to working virtually Uh, because we are we are a very lean organization and one things picked up then uh, it was all uh, good times for us so specifically for us there is no big uh, impact so what on uh, uh, new developments that you see happening in the coming future in this supply chain okay in uh, uh, industry all right so i will give you again very few insights some of the key insights one offline market got a huge hit so the loss of offline market is the gain of online market so what is happening omni channel and online both are like booming in the sense offline players now working towards uh, have an online channel to reach the customers and online players running on 2x volumes 3x volumes suddenly they realized they their engine couldn't do it because if you remember the first slide uh, i talked about the overall supply chain engine. suddenly they re- realized it is not so these kind of uh, uh, things are happening so what the trend is your global e-commerce numbers have gone really high that there it is estimated to reach now 6 trillion uh, us dollars in next few years and out of that 1.5 trillion is going to come from cross border sale that is people from one country ordering from the other country this is a great great boost second one there are very f- specific sectors who are benefited like health health related products this is again booming uh, anything healthy living related products this again uh, uh, booming this i am specifically talking about uh, sectors like products related to yoga products related to uh, home gymming right so this kind of things have picked up home appliances picked up because covid 19 times the uh, house help couldn't come in so that had a direct impact and suddenly home appliances uh, picked up so there are a lot of sectors which are really doing good so organizations have to work towards same way understanding the cano and then diversify their businesses and for sure you can't miss the online channel i think that is that should be part of the uh, distribution uh, strategy at this current scenario uh, your uh, yeah, your yeah, this is muted yeah so uh, we got this question from one of my students uh mr rishab and uh, unfortunately we have also run out of time mm-hmm. uh, uh, now so uh, if we can if i can 
this question send you to to you over the email and you can maybe uh, send it live yes so yeah so if you have time i can take it but if you are already out of time you can just make with a uh, name if, if, and question you can, you can send it to me yeah, i can uh, okay. respond back yeah uh, so fine sir then i'll maybe i'll take it up over the email itself okay thank you very much for being with us sir yeah and uh, uh, you spoke about this niche industry as you told analytics in supply chain and uh, uh, distribution channel and right. uh, uh my students in uh, this logistics as well as in uh, operations will understand uh, it much uh, deeper, deeper yeah. in terms of what they should improve how they should improve towards uh, yeah this subject thank you very much for being with us i uh, thank you on behalf of our director dr girish kathuria and uh, uh, dean dr raj tadasta and the entire team of uh, agbs mega for being with us we would like to have you on certain other platforms also because this is a very niche niche market and someone who is uh, 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 well known in this industry would be certainly of yeah. help to us as a um, institution of uh, logistics and uh, supply chain management uh, thank you very much sir for being with us i would like to also thank uh, professor vibhav goswaha for uh, bringing you here on this platform and uh, Uh, helping us in this session thank you very much yeah, th- thank, thank yeah, you thank you thank you mr dev sir yeah. thank you mr elvis Th- thank you uh, it was absolutely an thrilling session and uh, i'm sure our students have uh, a lot of takeaways from here and okay. uh, uh, and it would help them you know understand the subject well and they right. would it would be very beneficial for their future endeavor De- de- definitely. so uh, thank definitely. you so much thank you again so yeah. actually personally like to have you yeah yeah no, uh, personally i am not uh, fully satisfied because there were questions coming in and i i also have to rush on few places so i hope i have given the depth of it next time let's please plan for a two hour session and uh, i will make it up by whatever questions you have compile it let it be 50 questions 100 questions doesn't matter within 48 hours i will make a separate video and i will share it with you that is my commitment thank you very much yeah thank, thanks thank, a lot sir <laughs> thank you thank professor vibhaya thank, thank you so, so much. much yeah good day bye bye thank you for part of this for being with us yeah have a great day